Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. <coughs> God, uh, bad start. Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Oh, Black Knight Golem. It's like the Titans. But a human body was needed to imbue the armor with power, so Claudia's father used the corpse of a mute killer and weaved his soul within the armor to forge the magical being. Acquires souls, so she lures evil creatures, so he may devour them. Black Knight's not evil. The soul of the killer inside hopes for redemption by protecting his ward and sees a kindred spirit in the mute daughter of his creator, who he has grown to love. I like that they almost know that, like, the Titan actually isn't that good of a fight. And so they're like, hey, here's an actually cool fight. Ooh! Ooh! So this might, pardon me if I'm trying to preempt too much of this stuff here, but I love asking questions. It's my favorite thing. Um, I'm kind of wondering if this is going to turn into a thing where like Patrick Stewart is actually the one who killed her for some reason. I don't know. But then again, like. Gabriel Belmont does keep having James Sunderland style dreams of killing women killing women. Okay. Getting proper efficient use of your Ooh, word. Cool. Ooh, damn. Getting proper efficient use of your, like, slash. Ooh. Did not expect that to kill me. Right. Shouldn't use the jump on him. I'm not going to hit him into the air. Did I lose the magic that I had at the start? I feel like I started this fight with knives. Ooh, good dodge. I say to myself. Damn. Okay. I'm too cautious because I'm I'm looking out for that swipe. Because I can only imagine that like that swipe being so slow means that it probably does a shitload of damage, but like I'm taking chip damage from like the other stuff. Also, it's not even that bad. So I need to worry more about my like radial moment movement. Okay. Who to what now? Oh man. That's kind of cool. Like, I don't know about how I feel about like them lasting forever. But I am kind of... Okay, so they don't last forever, forever. But I am kind of interested about like... The idea of of a of a thing where it's like, hey, keep your rhythm up. Don't stay in one place. You can't. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. This is hard. Also, yeah, I'm not getting my, my levels back. Or my, my magic points back. Oh, but we are starting the fight later now, at the very least. I don't know why we still have to sit through Patrick Stewart, but... So is this is this going to be faster? No. 
if, if he doesn't, like, reliably summon another oil spill every time, then it's not going to be better. I'm not sure what hit me there. This is a cool fight, though. This is a good fight. I would almost like it if... I gotta stop jumping. I do not get the same invulnerability I get on a, a jump in Devil May Cry. Honestly, I kind of like, um, God, I almost wish that the camera was pulled down closer to Richter's butt. Like that mo that little moment earlier where the camera was like really close to the ground and you were like dodging around his feet. Like that felt good. It's why, um, God of War 4 and God Hand use that camera because like, it's not exactly the most cinematic or pretty looking of cameras, but like, you understand what you're doing when you have a camera like that. Like, when the camera is, like, right on you, you can see what your character's doing. Theoretically. Like, just look up the, the, the playthrough, like, the playthroughs of God Hand or God of War 4 that, like, Best Friends did. They're good playthroughs. They're fun. Um, but, like, damn. Um, I only mentioned because they're, they're playthroughs where I can assure the quality of, whereas if I just say, hey, look up this random God Hand, like, just go look up a video of God Hand and I don't tell you which one, then I don't know. There's this one, I don't remember the name of it, but it's literally called, like, oh, you've got, like, skin down there, dude, I have no idea. God damn. Alright, I got, like, maybe one more attack. There's this video that's called, like, God Hand, like, combo testing, and, and like, it, it literally has, like, such a boring name, but it's, it's literally just somebody who, in response to God Hand getting, like, a 3.5, like, getting a hilariously low score from IGN, and, like, look, I'll admit, that game is ugly and it's hard to play, but, like, God Hand getting such a low score is the first example of, like, hey... Game reviewers don't know how to play video games because they're reviewers and not gamers, and that's a problem because it means that they cannot accurately talk about this game. And, like, think about all the people who, like, rated Dark Souls or Demon Souls really low because they didn't understand. And, like, look, there are some... Oh, damn. There are some significant problems about Dark and Demon Souls. Um... But, like, those games deserve way more attention than they got now they're getting it but like think about like how Yahtzee Croshaw like famous internet reviewer like did not give those games the time of day and then later he went back to it and said that like hey I didn't give those games the time of day and I missed out on some of what could have been my favorite games of all time and now they are my favorite games of all time like Yahtzee for those who don't know actually has a let's play channel for those who don't watch him he's just some internet reviewer goes by Yahtzee Makes a lot of problems because that's a trademark name, but he just decided to use it as a screen name, and now he's more famous as it under his normal name, Ben Croshaw. Wow, I had I, uh, I had no chance back to back there. Get in there! Oh, he's dizzy. Dude, that sucks. Um, but yeah, God Hand getting a 3.5 from IGN is like... One of the first things of like, look, we should expect some degree of, of skill and like quality from people who review games. Because, like, if we get somebody who can't play a video game and then we have them review it, like, they can't beat Sekiro. Then, like, then, the, like, think about the guy who, like, beat it, like, beat Sekiro, beat it, goddamn. Beat Sekiro with, like, an infinite health mod on or something. Like, of course, the response to that guy, like, you didn't cheat the game, you, you cheated yourself, is silly and dumb. And, like, that's a good copypasta. But, like... 
if you're playing a modded game, you're not playing the game, you're playing a mod. Like, that's my opinion. And so, like, you're not going to get the game experience without playing the game. God, he gets so much health back for missing that grab. I feel like that's punitive for, like, not good enough of a reason to be punitive for the player. Oh, God. Alright. Um. Wow, you're just like a guy. It'd be kind of cool if he had an axe instead of a sword, so it was like he was an axe armor. I think I'd like that. me not trying to jerk off for the ninth time today because I'm depressed. Anyway, yeah. Somebody made a... a while ago, somebody made a video of just like, hey, here's comboing a god hand. It's fucking good. And like, it just shows off that like, yes, god hand is really solid. Um, and people aren't giving it the time of day, but like, you can do some crazy shit in that game, and that's super fun, and it's cool. Oh, he built a little cairn. That's nice, at least. I hope she was Catholic, because that's how she's getting buried. Chapter 2, nice. And I got the Dark Gauntlet. New skills unlocked. Um, oh, let's look at this. Tremor Pun, ooh, interesting. Even kill them in one shot. Buenos Dias. Earthquake punch. Interesting. So we're getting more stuff. Cool. Light flash. I still don't really want that. Oh, these aren't... There's nothing to buy in here, right? Doi. Oh, that's rad. I like this one. Let's grab that. Jet three. All right. The three towers. Oh, there's only two in here. Dreams are, are we starting to see the... the um... mind, and now Gabriel has paid a terrible price for succumbing to his weariness. The many sleepless nights since his love was taken from him, the fear of falling into sleep, the nightmares that haunt him have all played their part. Did he murder this poor girl? Or is there some other explanation? Doubt gnaws at him now, eating his very soul. The golem protected this child for centuries, loved her dearly. This one's a long there was one. No way he would oh my let God. Gabriel live, yet alone give up the gauntlet. Few men could continue. Uh, Most would abandon. Yeah, honestly, it's a little strange how, like, casually she's just taken out of the story. Onwards. A dark force has taken hold, and all creatures of the night will come to fear him now. Okay. Um, anyway. My point was to just, hey, look up this God Hand video, because it'll demonstrate how rad this, uh, that camera can be. A uh, piece of a guardian mage smith tech was an, originally not part of the design, but melded to the construction to the construct during the final stages. Uh, included because of the sheer power and brute force gave the golem, and deemed it necessary in order to protect his beloved, beloved child, but in truth it has a darker purpose. So this is. So this was my nice my nice party member. Whoa. Buenos Dias. This was my nice party member. And it gave me something on my like defensive dodge and block and, and my light magic hand. Even though it's like red and black and menacing looking. So I wonder 
it's maybe a little obvious that I'm going to get one that goes on right trigger. I wonder if I'm going to get that from a, a mean party member that I don't like. Maybe Pan. Um, it's perhaps a little silly that, like, the first thing that I use that gauntlet for is just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just to push the statue, and like not even so I can climb on the statue, so it'll knock over a little thing. Like it literally just chipped a few pieces out of that wall. So what do you mean I can't jump this on my own? Ah, here we go. Work. Yes. We drink that shit up. So one of my favorite weapons in anything is the gauntlets in Devil May Cry. And I mentioned them but not their name because like they show up in multiple games and like they're not generic but there there's they show up a few times under different names but they all have the same like basic vibe Oh Oh <laughs> Oh that feels really good actually <laughs> But yeah like Obviously, it's one of those things where, like, holding something in a specific way does not make it do more damage, you know? Like, just because I, I like, charge my fist up, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. I can't do more damage with it. But, like, the gauntlets are based off of that, and they're cool, and they're fun, so I'll let it slide. Um, I would say that the most famous ones, because they have appeared in more than one game... And they've been used by more than one character are the gauntlets called Beowulf, which also have um, boots. And they're these cool black and gray and silver and white gauntlets that glow with powerful light. And give you like awesome like flashing kicks and uppercut. They give you they give you Street Fighter moves, in fact. The gauntlets do. Um, and then there's a slightly different well, I guess I should say like a slightly worse version of them in Devil May Cry 1 called Ifrit, I think. Is that not a ledge that I can grab? Because it looks just like this ledge that I can grab. But fuck me, I guess. Um, but yeah, the gauntlets Ifrit and Devil May Cry 1 are just boxing gloves and they only cover your hands. Um, but you still get cool kicks with them for some reason. Oh, shit. Can I? There we go. Of course, you can't hit jump to jump. You gotta hit... You gotta hit uh, a punch to jump. Wait, what's happening? Now what am I doing? Okay. I like how you flash red like it's an S game. Oh, doy. Hey, Gabriel. It's me, Olmec. Hi, I'm a dog. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> so it burns way more of your shadow magic, but interesting. I kind of want I kind of would have wanted to put that on um, the shadow magic button, but it also makes sense that like like that appears to be the same glove that you're using every time. Oh, brutal. That appears to be the same glove that you're using to block anyway. So it makes sense that to give you a gauntlet weapon, they would make your big, like, blocking gauntlet bigger. Wait, what's happening? What are these? Are they regenerating? Looks that way. Damn. Got me. Gotta keep the rhythm up. Yeah, despite the fact that, that Ifrit and DMC1 does not, like, actually have boots, you do still get kicks with it. Um, and then Gilgamesh and Devil May Cry uh, 4 is loosely the same as the other two, except in addition to having gloves and mask, or gloves and boots, it also has a little face mask, which is really cool looking. Oh, hey. Of course, they need to have pants made of light, but the boobs are fine. A lot of casual breastage in this game. Not too explicit. N nothing so bad as Dante's Inferno. You got the fairy container. Search for fairy bl- Oh, how fun! Oh, uh, that's kind of silly. <laughs> oh, hey, a dark crystal. It's a little whimsical considering the fact that a woman was just brutally murdered. Eh, Castlevania, right? A scroll. A beautiful woman visited me in my dreams last night. She was bewitching and mesmerizing. A warrior is coming who will destroy the Lycan Lord. She and her people will help him. She was the queen of the fairies. She spoke in a language I could not recognize, and I understood every word. I will never look upon the such beauty again in this world. If I die this day, I die having seen and experienced no man's other things no man can lay claim to. And so I can happy de declare that the cake is not a lie. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I I know it's a portal thing. I know it's a reference to portal. It's not that funny. <laughs> It was overplayed in 2008. It wasn't that funny of a joke. When did this game come out? 2011? 2010? Why is the cake not a lie? Because you've seen... Is it, is it cake like fat ass? Because that's a fairly more modern interpretation of the phrase cake. I think it comes from a Rihanna song, I want to say. Oh, cool. Shadow Magic Gem. Um, <laughs> why is the cake not alive because you saw a pretty girl? Serious. That's so stupid. Yeah. Couldn't you just have grappled up there, Gaby, but no? Okay. For whatever reason, the uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine... I like how they call that game X-Men Origins... Also the movie, X-Men Origins colon Wolverine. Like, first and foremost, we were going to get more X-Men Origin movies. We did, but they didn't call it X-Men Origins. And then they also put Wolverine right in the title because everyone loves Wolverine. Um, I was thinking and talking about Devil May Cry. So yeah, a lot of people think Gilgamesh is the best because it has a cool little Kamen Rider face mask that looks radical. Um, 
But then there's the, the weapon Balrog, a reference to the boxer character in Street Fighter's American name. Um, and then also, like, all the other uh, fist weapons are named after, like, well-known pugilists or powerful demons, like... Beowulf and Gilgamesh are mortal and demigod, respectively. Oh. It's like a one-inch punch. It's so cool. Hell yeah. Fuck yes. Um, but anyway, the thing about Balrog is that in addition to having... Like, you actually fight like a straight-up boxer instead of like a Street Fighter character with boxing gloves on. Because like, your moveset is, is intentionally a reference to... Find the three fatties. Um, your moveset's intentionally a reference to like Ken in Street Fighter. It looks like it burns how much meter you have, so don't do that unless you really got to spend that, though. Aw, oh, my meter. This combat system is really good, man. Oops, wasted some knives. All right. <laughs> Good, I got a knife. They put so much stuff into this game, and, like, I gotta be honest, I don't really care about this beast riding mechanic. Hold on, let me finish my, my spiel about Balrog. So Balrog is cool because you either fight, like, a boxer with the fists out, or you can switch to having the feet. And it becomes like a capoeira dance. Um, and like, there's there's a shoulder pad that'll move around, and either it'll be be a shoulder pad or it'll be a knee guard, depending on what stance you're in. It's really neat. Uh, anyway, do I need to be on this guy? Now that I'm up here. But yeah, like, there's so much in this game that is, like... Cool. Yeah, there's so much going on in this game, and, like, I gotta be honest, like, I don't really care about this beast running mechanic. I don't think it's that cool. And I would actually prefer if it was taken out. Like, it's okay, but it doesn't really have that much going for it, you know? All right, I hope I didn't need you. Like, I would have liked more enemy variety, because, like, let's be honest, I have killed a lot of werewolves and goblins. Like, primarily werewolves and goblins. And, like, then again, this game is very polished. Like, this was an era where Konami could, like, really put some real work into a nice big 3D game. Like, think about how much work went into, like, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Fairies. Press the B buttons to release one. It'll hone in. Uh, and distract them. They're fragile and die after one use. 
You can activate certain ancient devices. Light fairies. This explosion will kill guys. Interesting. So we're getting more um, sub weapons. That's something that I actually didn't expect. Oh, and they're assigned here. I thought I was cycling through them, but if you look on the top right of the on the top left of the screen. A scroll. Uh, some inscriptions on the old walls related to the magic runes below. The blue one has one neighbor. There's a red one with a blue to the left of it. Blue rune has only one neighbor. There's a red rune with a blue to the left of it. Okay. Oh. Duh. Okay. Is that not right? The blue rune. Do I need both to be red? Like, what happens if we do this? Also, I like how that's a uh, the fairy. Actually, you can't see it because it's behind my head. Oh, there we go. Wait, let me turn off my thing. It's draining my magic. Please. <laughs> that's fun. Um, can we look and see? No. Okay, hold on. Ignore the room behind me, but you can see that uh, there's little fairies, and like that's your ammo for the fairy, and they look kind of like leaves to evoke their uh, their naturey aesthetic. But they also are very clearly just like a lady sitting there. It's a pretty clean design. I like that. All right, back up here because I want to get that mana. Man. I gotta be honest, like, it is crazy how often people use mana to refer to the magic meter, and, like, I don't even know why. Like, I know that it's widely used in, like, Warcraft. But, like, I'm trying to think, like, is that, like, I think that's, I want to say that's, like, Maori or, like, Polynesian or something. Yeah. Wee-hee. Cool. And like, dude, the reach, the appeal, that's radical. I like that. So I will say, I, I mentioned the ammo mechanics prior of like, how you don't get like infinity daggers, but you do get enough and like, that's cool. And the daggers do good work. And then you also have the ammo mechanics of like, the red and blue magic. Wait, what the hell's happening up here? You also have those uh, mechanics, but like... I don't know how I feel about... Like... The crystal shards being like a screen clear. Same deal with fairies. Like, stunning one guy is like... I don't know, maybe that's not like a... Then again, like, what else would you spend it on? But then they also make it a key, actually. So that is also what you spend it on. Like... What am I supposed to be doing up here? Oh. Didn't see that. Herder. 
um, like making it a key means that you never ever want to spend it because like what if you need it like dude are you for real It feels just like Beowulf, which is why I keep bringing it up. Also, it evokes the feeling of like a one-inch punch or like one for all. No. Dude, are you for real? The amount of health that enemies get back is like crazy. Like, I feel like I shouldn't be punished that hard. I, I'm not even sure if I agree with the game mechanic of like, oh, you gotta grab the enemy and do your little, your cool little animation because we animated it and you should look at it. Like, I don't know if I agree with that mechanic. Like, just because I don't feel like mashing or, or doing like perfectly timed button inputs. I mean, not perfectly timed. They're not that simple. Or no, they're not that hard. Like, I don't know if I shouldn't be denied, if I should be denied progression. I felt like I should go further this way because uh, it'll be less to walk overall. Also, on the topic of these, like with the other ones where you have to like spin the sticks and if you stop spinning, the gates go back up. Those feel also too punishing for almost no reason. Like, why would they why would they do that to you? Why would they make it so, you know, you have to constantly be spinning the stick you can't stop spinning the stick. And if you stop, you have to start all over. Like, what's the purpose of that? Is it an immersion thing? Because, like, this isn't exactly a Tomb Raider here. I mentioned in the last episode, I think the description that, like, it felt a little Tomb Raider-y. Oh, cool. Gotta have one more. Um, but like, I, I, I'm never sure about those mechanics. Like, think about all of the times in a video game where you have walked across a little narrow beam. You know? Think about them. Think about, like, Silent Hill Downpour or Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. But not Last of Us. And think about how you've had to, you know, carefully balance and wiggle the stick from side to side and you know, not fall off. And if you do, you have to go back to walking and like, you have to walk slow and like, now think about Last of Us. Last of Us won when it was still good and they hadn't like annihilated this game. And think about how Last of Us doesn't do that. And when you walk across a thing, you just walk across it and the character automatically balances because they're not a toddler, you know? Like, I don't think I'm at risk of falling. Like, I'm, I'm a big guy. And I'm not, like, like super coordinated. And I'm not, like, a gymnast or anything. But I don't think I'm really at risk of falling off of a, of a, of a beam that I'm walking across. And if I am, I would just drop down and, like, shimmy across it. Oh, sweet. I didn't know they filled you up. That's awesome. Um, and, like, the fact that Last of Us just doesn't do that, like, that's... That's a million times better. Like, it's so weird that, like, everyone did the harder version. And then somebody finally did the easy one. And it was just, like, a million times better. Like, it was more fun. It was more engaging. It was convenient. Like, God. Last of Us 1 is so good. It's amazing how they like annihilated that game.
Yes. A shadow magic. The little Oriole of them there kind of looks like the final boss of Shadow the Hedgehog for the PS2. Or was it on GameCube? Or was it on multiple? I do not remember. Okay, we saw this down below. Oh, Shway, I'm at full health. Fire emoji. I dig that. Okay. We were over there. So now we go down here. Yeah, there's like a lot of mechanics in here that are like... I don't know, like kind of reminiscent of like a Tomb Raider or, or like an Uncharted. But like specifically the 2013 Tomb Raider. Um, in how like... Like 2013 Tomb Raider, possibly because Minecraft had recently popped off. Like you just get a little bit in the way of like... Okay, why am I doing this again? I already did this. You get a little bit of, like, the survival mechanics. Ugh. Dude, what? Oh, but they give you a thing anyway. Okay, then what's the point? Maybe this would be a good time for this, huh? Oh, you have to be, like, straight up full full to use it. That's lame. I thought that you would have ammo. Because you, like, need to find four of them in order to, to use it. <laughs> okay, word. That feels good. But the charge up should be considered. Does it break blocks and guards? Because I noticed that these guys are blocking like a motherfucker on me. And it might be interesting if these are breaking through their blocks. I would like that a lot. Guard breaks are always a good mechanic. Like, sometimes they're a little obtuse. Like a Dark Souls. Also, did we fight like three upgraded lichens last episode? And I gotta mash a button. Like last chapter when we were looking for the Dark Crystal. Sorry, I gotta itch my nose here. They gave us. Uh, they gave us like three. three lichens, then we fought them. Actually, you know what? It's fine. Like, there's a lot of like, hey, they usually they reuse these assets and we just saw them or whatever. My crystal is already complete. Oh, did he drop two or something? I feel really bad about leaving a crystal here. Oh well. Let's go top off. Magically speaking, at least. Um, anyway, I was gonna comment on it. Again, we're talking about Devil May Cry 4. Devil May Cry 4 has you refight bosses. Um, and you'll fight almost every like every boss except the worst boss and best boss three times. Um And like some people think that sucks. The thing is, the first time you fight it, you're just learning the game, you're figuring things out, whatever, it's fine. The second time you fight them, you have a, a different moveset and character. And the third time you fight them, your character has been significantly upgraded and changed so that it's like you have a whole new character. Hmm, that's fun.
It's like a little Pokeball. Um, only one boss feels particularly bad because, like, I mean, this is kind of a spoiler, but also, like, it's a Devil May Cry game. At some point, you're going to get an ability called Devil Trigger. Just heads up. Um, that looks really cool. I want that. Um... There's only one boss in Devil May Cry 4 that you fight after you've already gotten Devil Trigger as Nero. And then when you come back and fight her as Nero again, like, there's very little different about the fight. The other fights, you get the chance to fight them again with Devil Trigger after not having DT. And so, like, that's... Eh. Ooh, that looks cool. We'll do that next time, though. I have an Alfred. This has been Shadowvania, Lord... Shadowvania, Lords of Castles. Goddamn. Castlevania, Lords of Shadows, Part 1, The Ultimate Edition. Um, I had a good time. I hope you guys did too. I'll see you next time. Bye.